sharp archaeologists towards community archaeology. Um, I first encountered community archaeology as a second year uh, student when I was born in university um, and went on to write my, my dissertation then on it. Um, but since then, working in the commercial archaeological sector for about seven years or so um, and on several community <laughs> projects, I developed an interest in um, community archaeology a lot further. Um, in particular, the impact the community archaeology is having in the commercial archaeological sector and from commercial archaeologists. And background research into this um, field that's yet to be a focused study into this area. And in order to begin to understand the impact, I recognise that research needs to be conducted into the attitudes and approaches towards community archaeology by those employed in commercial archaeology, as these may have impact on the implementation of community archaeology in the commercial sector, and thus form a basis for further study into the impact community archaeology is having in the commercial sector. Um, as this is a new area of research, um, my paper has acted simply as a pilot for further study with the uh, inclusion of a questionnaire to gather some data and build an understanding of some of the attitudes and approaches that are being made by commercial archaeologists uh, with the aim that the results of the paper will form a platform for future study um, can be based. My readers were, um, for examining commercial archaeologists and commercial archaeology were, were twofold. Firstly, <laughs> uh, first thing that um, is the area I'm currently employed in, um, and so I've got an interest in that aspect. Uh, but also that the um, that the majority of archaeologists employed within commercial archaeology um, as one of the largest sectors, um, it's uh, <laughs> the um, it's the implication that community archaeology community archaeology that will be the attitudes and approaches of this group of archaeologists that will affect not only the implementation of um, community archaeology in the sector as a large area of the archaeological discipline, but also perhaps affect the future of community archaeology itself. Um, as part of my research, I just uh, no. <laughs> Keeping them within this sector. 
Um, the fact that the companies um, within the sector have been affected by the various changes in the government policy and economic situations, uh, especially during the uh, recent recession um, with regard to job opportunities and availability. And also the uh, issues of training affecting new graduates, which some feel aren't fully prepared for a career in commercial archaeology. Um, and as mentioned at the 2012 IFA conference, that whilst um, a lot of archaeologists are turning their attention to engaging in training with the community volunteers, we're perhaps missing out on training um, new graduates and recent entrants into the commercial environment. Um, and at the same time, all these issues, we've also got the issues of um, it, uh, the commercial archaeologists are continuing, um, as we see with the Royal Charter, um, to strive for the definition of recognition as professional organisations and individuals. So, as part of my research, a questionnaire was conducted with those employed in the commercial sector to begin to form a picture of the type of attitudes and approaches being formulated with regard to community archaeology and how these may impact upon its implementation in the sector. For the purpose and scope of this study, it wasn't necessary to speak to all archaeologists employed in the commercial sector. And therefore, a sample survey was conducted and questionnaires were distributed to eight commercial organisations and companies um, who conducted community archaeology projects. Um, this sample survey was simply to act as a pilot to test the responses on a qualitative level and the potential being set for further in-depth and detailed research in this study. Um, so, I just went through the uh, responses to the first four, um, just to let you know that participants came from a variety of positions covering a range of grades. Um, it would have been nicer to get some more results from the field first based staff so that there could have been perhaps more comparison between the approaches of the managerial side and, and the excavators on site. Um, from the responses, 100% felt that they took part in some community related community archaeology related task or activity, um, which is quite interesting given the, the range of positions. Um, overall, the responses to how to define community archaeology, I'm not going to go into those because they've all been uh, mentioned today really, um, as, especially with regards to quite difficult subject to, to narrow down the definition for. Um, and uh, the responses tended to reflect all the literature that I was seeing. Um, and 100% of the respondents felt that there has been an increase in uh, community projects being undertaken in the commercial environment. With regards to this question, various responses were given. Um, however, it's found that the responses for the key influences or reasons for commercial archaeological companies undertaking community archaeology can be grouped under eight categories funding policy, economic recession, remit, profile, personal benefit to the archaeologists, and community and public demand. So, for funding, things were mentioned such as HLF funding, it was easier on new access to funding, policy, again, we were mentioning EPS5, everything here, inclusion in the briefs, the South Court Convention, and government statements. With regard to uh, economic recession, there was a need to provide work, need to diversify, limited commercial work, and the recession itself. And with remit, it might be something that uh, the company had already been undertaken for a while. Um, Profile, it was seen um, as positive towards uh, from a client perspective and raising the commercial profile, but also raising the profile of archaeology. Um, personal benefits to archaeologists were that it was interesting, it was engaging, and there's a genuine desire from tell today for archaeologists to um, participate in this kind of work. Um, with regard to public um, and demand and community, there's uh, comments made that the public interest has definitely increased and community groups are offering more opportunities for archaeologists participate. These categories fit into the social, political and economic professionalism factors influencing the attitudes and approaches of commercial archaeologists from regards to community archaeology and implementation of the sector. So in response to this question, opinion was varied. The six respondents felt that participants should be offered a number of activities ranging from site-based activities to post excavation classes encompassing all activities normally undertaken by commercial archaeologists thus involving them in all aspects of the archaeological process. Four respondents could be seen to have a dependent attitude, citing safety concerns, archaeological sensitivity, project types, and the groups that would be involved. It's also highlighted by some that activities offered would be dependent on funding and budgets, um, and perhaps also linked to timeframes. 
The community of archaeology implementation of the colonial archaeological sector, the attitudes and approaches in response to this question could be seen as positive. Many advocating that participants should be offered a wide range of activities, whilst highlighting the safety of volunteers and the archaeology should be in consideration. Opinion was divided in response to this question, and as such, the big group is welcoming cautious and dependent attitudes. The suit respondents were considered to take a welcoming attitude to prove cautious, although one response could perhaps be described as a negative attitude, and three as a dependent attitude. With regard to welcoming, it's described as a key, it should be a key aim of all archaeological work, um, and it should, it's a move in the right direction, and it's raising awareness of archaeology and archaeologists. With regard to caution, there was a highlight of the risk of free labour and that perhaps it's seen as a bit of a retrograde step in regard to the time it's taken in turning archaeology into a profession. It, it perhaps shouldn't be for site work and health and safety and time constraints were also considered. Um, with regard to dependence, it was stated that as to whether this might be built in at the project set up and uh, whether time and budgets again would be part of this. These attitudes will affect the approach taken to implementing community archaeology in the commercial sector. If the commercial archaeologists implementing the community archaeology projects adapt to the welcoming attitude, the theme suggests that the projects implemented would be ones based on sharing knowledge with the community engagement featuring as a key element, um, the scope of features in different project aspects. The cautious attitude would see commercial archaeologists reluctant to approach and implement and conduct community archaeology, especially with regard to the development work they undertake. The fear that commercial pressures and constraints would have significant but potentially negative impacts on the issues of professionalism by involving volunteers. The dependent attitude would see archaeologists believing that community archaeology activities are a good idea, yet be restricted in the implementa implementation of limiting activities of the projects to sites for the be implemented in a safe manner. When asked how they believed that they benefited, it was noticeable that many participants felt they benefited from the environment and atmosphere of community archaeology projects in comparison to the one they experienced on commercial projects. The comments that it's fun, fulfilling, refreshing, or re energizing, citing working with like minded participants and the enthusiasm and interest of the volunteers, as well as the lack of commercial pressures of being responsible for this. Others appear to take an educational attitude with reference to skills learning, creative thinking, and communication. And it was also noted that it would be interesting and challenging. The economic was also, uh, benefit was also noted with regard to community archaeology being a source of archaeological employment. From the responses, it's possible to suggest, suggest that individual benefits to archaeologists would be social, educational, and economic, as well as well-being. And the last of these can sometimes be found to, attached to, or often attached to, community archaeology in relation to the volunteers, and it's therefore interesting to see that archaeologists experience this as part of a break from the pressures of the commercial environment. This outlook could potentially contribute to a positive attitude towards the implementation and inclusion of community archaeology in the commercial sector if archaeologists feel that they are benefiting in some way. In comparison to the previous question, 83% of respondents believe that their company benefits from doing community archaeology, while 17% remain unsure. When asked to explain their response, comments were made regarding this being difficult to judge and that its limited uh, commercial gain increased exposure to people and the media made good economic sense and that community projects would be good for staff around. Others believe that community archaeology benefits and improves the company profile. Some of the benefits to skills, either learned by doing or implementing community archaeology, or for the public themselves. Funding and grant access were also mentioned as reasons. From this, it can be seen that participants believe that their company benefits from community archaeology in an economic sense with regard to being it bringing in sources of income, raising their profile, and improving their skills base. While the majority believe that they as individuals and their company benefit from, from community archaeology being incorporated into the project, 58% felt that the clients also would, ben would also benefit, and 70% responded no, and 25% remaining unsure. With the archaeological companies, um, as with the archaeological companies, the benefits suggested for clients also took an economic trend with publicity advertising, building relationships, and meeting programs. However, it's recognised that clients do not always see these benefits. And for future research, it would be interesting to speak to clients and to get their views. The majority commented with regard to professional archaeologists being able to provide resources such as skills, knowledge, standards, supervision, expertise, supports, specialism, best practice, guidance, and good leadership and tuition. Comments were also made that commercial archaeologists have worked professional standards with regard to dealing with the archaeology and archiving. 
There's also commented that the positive aspects would depend on what and who grant the projects. The responses to this question make it clear that commercial archaeologists take the attitude that when implementing community archaeology projects through the commercial sector, it's the professional approach they take to dealing with the archaeology that's the most valuable positive aspect that they can find, which can also be seen in the results or in the form of skills, knowledge, and standards. The second question on here um, can be seen as acting as a counterbalance to the previous, with five respondents feeling there are no negative aspects, although it was commented that it shouldn't be forced into projects where it's not required, either. Other issues raised involve time, funding, availability, staff, legacy, and limitations of commercial necessity and health and safety. The negative aspects and limitations which were cited tended to relate to those affecting commercial archaeology projects. Well, this is perhaps expected. Um, and um, the majority, just to sketch over this question very quickly, um, to, just to say that the majority did feel that um, community archaeology does have a future as part of commercial archaeology. Um, the analysis of how the attitudes and approaches towards community archaeology by those employing commercial archaeology may impact on its implementation in the sector is a new area of research within community archaeology, and as such, my investigations can form the basis for future research in this area and the wider question of the impact community archaeology is having in the commercial archaeological sector. My research dealt with the relative aspects to this, and um, I'm comprising a discussion of community archaeology, current issues and themes. The uh, growth of the commercial archaeological sector and the current issues faced by those employed within it and how these relate to community archaeology, followed by the results of a pilot questionnaire carried out by a small sample of archaeologists employed in the commercial sector to build an understanding of some of the attitudes and approaches to community archaeology being made by commercial archaeologists. I'd now like to draw upon some of the aspects of these discussions <coughs> and conclude the key aspects identified with regard to the, commercial, the research question. Make suggestions for the future research built upon this study. Um, as I already stated earlier, as a result of this research, I believe there are four key aspects to the attitudes and approaches of those employed in commercial archaeology social, political, economic, and professional. The social, political, and economic issues can be seen throughout the research as aspects which affect the attitudes and approaches of commercial archaeologists towards community archaeology. These can be seen as individual aspects and at times as a cycle of influence upon one another. This cycle has demonstrated how the impact of the economic situation of recent years, which has had an impact on the political situation in the UK, with the government implementing more community focused policies and acts under their big society ethos, using so social aspects to drive political measures with the aim of distributing more power to the local communities and society, and in turn potentially boosting the economy. This has been reflected in the commercial archaeologists' attitudes and approaches to community archaeology and its implementation in the commercial archaeological sector. With emphasis on regard to the economic aspect, issues can be raised over whether the archaeologists use community archaeology as a concept as a way of accessing funding. The economic downturn in recent years appears to have pushed to the forefront attitudes from commercial archaeology companies of approaching community archaeology with the concept of selling archaeological investigations as a brand and in positive social and political guises marketed to volunteers and clients to promote the work and profile of their company with the hope of increasing their revenue and sources of in the recent financial climate. It was, this was reflected by the questionnaire where a number of participants cited the need to diversify as a result of the recession and the, the increase in commercial, commercial archaeological companies offering community archaeology, with links made by participants to raising the company's profile and potential funding. Whilst individual benefits cited by the participants could be observed as social, educational, economic well-being, it was clear that the benefits assigned to implementing community archaeology in the commercial sector by the commercial arch archaeological companies as a whole were economic. The companies approach the projects from an economic aspect and the staff from a more social approach. And it is possible that future research in this area could identify potential areas of conflict. Professionalism is a theme that can be seen throughout the research paper and the differentiations between those employed to undertake archaeological activities and volunteers the growing recognition and de definition of archaeology as a professional discipline and the setting of professional standards of the RFA. Along with the opinions expressed in the questionnaire regarding the incorporation of community archaeology in the commercial sector and the implications this may have on archaeology's professional standing, including the positive impact of commercial archaeology 
groups can have by ensuring professional standards are applied to community archaeology projects and tasks. My research suggests that some archaeologists have the opinion that archaeology needs recognition as a profession and the public have been excluded by the commercialisation and consequential commercialisation <laughs> of the government. Thank you. 